Not too long ago, I presented a number of games that used visual elements to get their clues across to other players. And now, just as I told my children when they were younger, it's time to use our words. Let's start the clock. Mystic Paths is a cooperative word game for two to six players in which each player must lead the others on a specific path around a board made up of words. The farther the players can go after five rounds, the higher their team score will be. To begin, the forest is set up with a random assortment of words representing objects and proper nouns. Each player is given a figure, colored base, set of numbered and not tokens, and a secret path card. This is the sequence of words that you must follow. Paths will never double back on themselves, but could visit the same space more than once. Starting with a hand of four word cards, players simultaneously choose three of them as clues for the first three steps on their path. Each card has two words on it, so clues will be placed with the number token covering the unused word. Not tokens can be used as well to imply that the code word is not like the clue. Once everyone has decided on their clues, one at a time, each player reveals their clues, and the rest of the group decides step by step where to move that player's figure. If a step is correct, the figure moves forward, leaving their colored base behind as a reminder of where they came from, and the players guess the second and then third words. However, if a guess is incorrect, a not token is placed on the incorrect word, and progress is done for the turn for that player. After all players have shared their clues and successfully moved their figure forward zero to three steps, the next round begins, with players drawing back up to four cards and deciding on clues for their next three steps in sequence, whether it be new words entirely or additional clues for the unguessed words. The team has five rounds of play to get all players as far as possible, earning one point for each guessed step. Completing a path in four rounds gives a bonus of two points, and doing so in five is worth one bonus point. At the end of the game, all player scores are averaged and ranked against this chart to get a resulting team score. What you consider a victorious score is up to you, but I'm pretty happy with any of the A results. Mystic Paths is a very accessible entry to the genre, with some nice features that constrain the decision space. Not only do players only have to decide which three words to use from their hand of eight words when deciding on clues, the guessers only have to decide amongst a small cluster of possibilities for each step. Looking at clues in three-word bursts can help with the decision process. This clue could apply to two different words, but the next clue doesn't work as a next step, which is further evidence for the choice on the left. Some players could be frustrated by not having a good choice in their hand for every word, but that's part of the challenge, making the best of a particular hand. Inclusion of a number of blank word disks means you can customize your set with new path words. Component sizes could be a bit of a problem with large player counts, as sections of the board can become rather congested at times, making it hard to read the words on the board. But overall, ten, Mystic nine, Paths eight, offers seven, a rewarding seven, cerebral nine, challenge. Four, three, 8 out of 10. Two, one, zero. High Clue is a game about forming clues for words by using word tiles, similar to those magnetic poetry sets you might see on a refrigerator, and successfully guessing the clues of other players. Components include a whole bunch of double-sided word tiles, a deck of symbol cards, guessing tiles with those same four symbols, and a set of score tokens. Depending on the number of players, the game will play over six, four, or two rounds of play. Each round will use one side of the word tiles, so at the start of the game, four piles of three, two, or one tile each are placed white side up under one of each of the symbol cards. Players take a set of guessing tiles, one of each symbol, and draw 15 word tiles, placing them white side up in their play space. To start a round, players each secretly draw a card from the deck. This is the word in the center for which they must make a clue. Several players may have the same code word in a particular round. Simultaneously, players must use at least two of the words in front of them to form a clue. When they're ready, they turn their unused words over so others can't see what wasn't used in the clue. Then, one at a time, players examine a player's clue and secretly vote on which of the four words in the center matches the clue. Guesses are revealed and points are scored. You get one point for each player that guesses your word correctly, and they get one point for correctly guessing your word. After a round using the white side of the tiles, 
tiles used in the round are flipped, and the process is repeated with the black side of the tiles. After a black side round, the top tile in each center pile is discarded, and players pass all 15 of their word tiles clockwise around the table, receiving a new set from the player on their left. After the final tiles are discarded from the center, the game is over and most points wins. In a two-player game, the players work together to get at least six points over the course of four rounds of play, with eight points being a perfect score. For an advanced challenge, players can try haiku mode, where they get 20 tiles rather than 15, but must construct their clues in the form of a haiku poem. Haiku is all about making the best of the words in front of you. It's rare that you'll be faced with the perfect option for a particular word, so thinking in abstract concepts and coming at the words from different angles is key to getting your point across. Sometimes it's more important to make a clue leading away from a particular word if multiple similar words are on the table. Lively discussion is bound to occur, as everybody tries to figure out the thought process for a particular clue. I also like how the same set of words will make its way around the table, so you can see what others will do with a similar set. I think the sweet spot for player count is 6 to 8 players, playing 4 rounds. That offers plenty of discussion and opportunities to score. Higher player counts provide plenty of discussion, but only 2 rounds of play. My box got damaged, so I appreciate how everything fits in an easy-to-carry tile bag. The tactile nature of clue building plus its easy portability make High Clue a great choice for large group word game. 7 out of 10. So Clover is a cooperative word game that asks players to create single word clues that will lead their team to place square cards correctly in a 2x2 two two grid, earning points for the team. Each player gets a clover board and dry erase marker, and draws four cards from the deck. These cards are randomly placed in the slots on the clover board, keeping them secret from the other players. Simultaneously, each player looks at the two keywords on each edge of the clover, and tries to come up with a clue word that represents those two words. The clue must be a single word, but could be a compound word, proper noun, acronym, number, or onomatopoeia in addition to just a common noun. You can't, however, use a form of one of the words, a translation in another language, or just make up your own words. Once a player's clues are complete, they remove the cards from the frame, add one additional card from the deck, and shuffle the cards together. Then, one at a time, players reveal their empty grid and five cards, and the rest of the group tries to place the cards in the right position. Once the group thinks they're ready, the clue giver silently removes any cards that are incorrect, and the group gets one more chance to get it right. After that second attempt, the team gets one point for each card in the correct position. If they manage to guess correctly on the first attempt, they get two bonus points in addition to the four for a total of six. This continues with each player acting as spectator while the rest try to score points. Officially, you're just playing for a high score here, out of a maximum score of six points per player, but I consider it a win if we manage to guess everybody's grid on the first or second attempt. For teams who have gotten too good at the game, they can increase the difficulty by adding more than one card from the deck after completing their clues. Those unknown cards can certainly derail your plans for the round, as a perfect card for your clue might be added to the mix with no warning. So Clover exercises different muscles from other word games, as it requires you to find the connection between two sometimes disparate words, with an eye toward avoiding your team making connections with words that aren't on the outside of the grid. True, you don't know what will be on the mystery card, but being as specific as possible with your clue is very helpful. Sometimes this is easier said than done, like when the two words are vastly different indeed. I tend to view this situation as a worthy challenge, though some players may be frustrated if they can't come up with a connection right away. While I've had success with introducing this to my more mainstream gaming family, getting some of the concepts down took longer than I expected, but once we were on the same page, the charming clover boards and cooperative discussion really drew everybody in for a joyous experience. This continues to stay in rotation when we're in the mood for a brain-bending word game. 8 out of 10.
One, All right, time to stack them up. And this one's a little difficult, not just because I have to balance things on this bag that I'm putting Haiklu in. Um, so Haiklu does go on the bottom. I, I really like all three of these games. Um, and Haiklu has a really solid uh, mechanism, and it's fun to mess around with those tiles. But it, it doesn't seem to go anywhere. It's, it's sort of several rounds of the same thing. Um, so Clover, a little bit uh, better, really because of its novelty. Um, but it also doesn't feel like it has a destination. And that's why Mystic Paths has to go on the top for me. Um, it, it has that path-building aspect, that finish line that you're trying to get to, that, that ultimate success at the end. Uh, so it has a little bit of an arc and a, and a push to it. Um, they're all three great choices uh, for your next word game night, um, but, but Mystic Paths wins out on this one. Thanks for watching. I'm Eric Summer. We'll see you next time.